So today we will discuss about basic questions and terminologies related to GIS. The full form of GIS is Geographical Information System. And yes, what is GIS? Uh, the Geographic Information System is known as an information system for capturing, storing, analyzing, managing and presenting data, which is geo-referenced. So what do you mean by geo-referenced? So basically by geo-reference uh, we mean that suppose this is a point and I want to represent this point with respect to this frame. Now this frame has two axes. If I take this axis as Y and this axis as X, then I can represent this point in terms of X and Y. Now, x means how much distance uh, distance is from this point 0. If I take this as the origin, then uh, this, this is the origin where x and y both are 0. So from this point, at how much distance in the x direction, is this point situated and in how much distance in y direction is this point situated. So these two information is sufficient to represent the location of this point on a 2D frame. If I use a 3D frame then Another information is required, which is known as Z. Now, in case of GIS, you can represent, uh, you can use this information system to capture, store, analyze, manage, and present data which is georeferenced. This means if this point is georeferenced by this data x, y, and z, then with the help of GIS, I can also represent many informations like name of this location, uh, name of this location and then well, what is the population this uh, density of the in that location what is the car density of this that location what is the floral density in this location and many related information which can be represented by a point uh, that can be presented through this geographical information system. Actually what happens is, uh, you, uh, you suppose we take this point in this 2D frame and we know that name of this point is A and the population density at this point is suppose 2 lakhs and the land use of this location is suppose city that means urban, urban uh, type of land use and temperature of this location is 32 degrees centigrade suppose and 
Now rainfall or average rainfall is suppose 100 millimeter. So all this information can be presented with the help of geographical information system with specific layers. Take the example of this picture. Here you, see, you can see that in different layers they have represented different information. In one layer they have re represented land use, in another layer they uh, represented uh, elevation, in another layer they re uh, represented parcels, then another layer streets, another layer customers. So various types of information can be represented by different layers with the help of the geographical information system. Now let us move into the uh, move into some very important definition related to GIS. Now what is a coverage? Now, in case of GIS, a coverage is a mapping of one aspect of data in space. It is actually what I uh, explained just now in the previous slide. The way you can represent data of georeferenced points or lines or polygons. The way you can represent that, the way you can present that is collectively known as coverage. Now there are two types, two ways you can uh, represent uh, the information related to georeference point. That is shapefile and grid file. Now what is shapefile? Shapefile is a collection of files with .shp, .shx, .dbf extension. The actual shapefile relates specifically to files with the .shp extension. Now, what happens is, my first question is how these shapefiles are created and what information is stored in .shp dot shx and dot dbf. Now, now shapefiles you can say is a way to specially describe some information related to some geography geometrical shapes like point, polyline, poly. In case of point, we can represent it, represent the name of the point or temperature of the point or the population of the point. In with polylines, we can represent an area. It may be the watershed area, it may be the city area, it may be a wetland. And with the help of line shape file, we can represent a road, we can represent a river, we can represent the pipeline. So with the help of this shape file, what happens is we used to capture capture some information from a image. Suppose there is an image of this wetland. Suppose now there are some house here. And there are some agricultural field here in this location. Now, what we can do is we can use the geographical information system to digitize these areas and georeference the same to present the inherent descriptions available in these areas. Suppose I can digitize this wetland with the help of with 
with the help of polygon shape pipe. If there is a road coming out from this uh, wetland, then I can represent that with the help of line shape pipe. And to represent the name of this location, I can just use a point and I can digitize that point with the help of point shape. Now, suppose if I want to represent the uh, water quality of this wetland, then I can use this polygon shape file. Within this shape file, I can create attribute tables. I can create some attribute tables. Which I can use to store relevant data about this wetland. Now these attribute tables have two mandatory col columns. One is representing the longitude, another one representing the latitude. After that, you can represent any type of data relevant to this wetland. Suppose you, have, you can represent water quality, you can repre represent total number of fish here in this wetland and many other relevant information you can store here. So, and if there is another wetland here, small, very small wetland, this can also be digitized. And if this is wetland 1 and wetland 2, first row of this attribute table will be used to store the information related to wetland number 1, that is the wetland which you have digitized first. And then Wetland number two, that is the wetland that you have digitized second. So you can store both the information of wetland number one as well as wetland number two. Now, after that, you can also digitize this agriculture field. It is better to use separate polygon shape files for digitizing different types of land use or different types of geographical features. Now you can use another shape file to digitize the agriculture fields and another shape file to digitize the settlements. And you can do and you can do reference and store various information related to those in the attribute tables. Now, when you are digitizing, the entire information of the digitization is stored into the SHX file, where it stored the X and, X and Y coordinate or latitude and longitude of the geographical features that you have digitized. Okay. And all the relevant information about those geographical features like this water quality, uh, then your that uh, total number of fish, all these type of informations are stored in .dbf file or database file. And both are both the .shx file and .dbf file are connected are connected by the .shx file. So .shx file connects .dbf file, which is the data base which 
stores the relevant information connected to that geographical feature and sh takes file which stored the lat and long or the coordinates of the, those geographical features. Now this SHX and BBA file is connected by the SHP file. That is why you have to import only this SHP file into your geographical information system and automatically these two files will be imported. Now this is shape file and it is also a vector file and it has a uh, if you use the vector file or the shape file to digitize geographical features, then the accuracy of those of the digitization will be very high. However, storing requirement will be also very high because shape files store the information in a point in points. So this polyline or line shape file is nothing but a group of points. This polygon is nothing but a group of points which constitutes the polygon. So and all the lat and long information of all these points is stored in the DBA file of the shape file. So although they are very accurate, uh, they represent a very accurate digitization, but the storing requirement is higher for shape file compared to another very popular coverage file which is known as grid file. Now what is grid file? If shape file stores its information in a point, grid file stored its information in a grid of uniform dimension. Any image, you see, any photography you see is a representation of, a, of the information through grids, through uniform dimension grids which are known as pixels. So if I if I if I want to digitize this line shape file with the help of grid file, then this line shape file, all the points that constitute this line shape file, in case of grid file, will be represented by boxes, square boxes of uniform dimensions. And each of these boxes will store the relevant informations. Certainly, the accuracy of grid files is lesser compared to shape file because shape file store its information in point, and you will see the grid file store its information in grids. So you see, there is error in the representation of an information, geospatial information, related to some geographical features by grid file. Because lots of abstraction is there, as you can see. In case of point, there is no abstraction. It is a single point which really represents the geographical feature. But the storage, storage requirement of grid file is very low because grid file stores information in pixels, which is described by or represented by DN numbers. More the DN numbers, more will be the information stored there. Less the DN numbers, less information will be stored in there. So about that I will discuss later on. Now let us see what is uh, this geographical coordinate system. Yes, what is coordinate system? Now there are uh, actually, as I have already uh, described, 
any point can be represented geospatially by the coordinate system only x y z or x y if it is 2d then it is x y if it is 3d then it is x y z and uh, related to this uh, what i will uh, i will discuss it or i will i will explain it in a, another presentation but for now you can say that you see for earth to represent a point on uh, earth you see if i want to uh, i want to show I, I have to say what is the x y and z of this location you see as the earth surface is not plain not uh, very smooth surface so we have to use projection systems to represent a point in earth into a 2d or 3d framework that means if i want to represent this uh, the all the points in in uh, on earth into a 2d paper or framework then I have to take the projection of all the points of this, uh, all the points available on the earth surface onto a 2D paper. Then we, I, I have to take the projection of these uh, of the points. So these projections can be taken by a straight paper, a plain paper, or you can use uh, if this is earth, then you can use a paper like this paper you can fold into cone cone shape and you can cover the earth and if suppose all the points are uh, if all the points are painted then the impression of those points that will be printed on this conal conally fold paper upon the art, uh, art surface that those impre impressions will represent all the points of the uh, of our art on the art surface by a conal projection system that means what i want to explain is that suppose if you want to represent a point in a 2d paper because if this is the paper and you want to represent a point and the location of the point in this on this paper then it is very easy you can straight away use the latitude longitude and if it is a 3d paper then you can use the z to represent this point geographically or geospatial however in case of the points on earth Suppose this point on this earth, here you cannot, and if you want to represent this point onto this paper, then what you have to take is, you have to use a 2D paper, I am just giving an example, and you have, you, you have to paint this point, and you have to press this 2D paper like this, then only the impression of this point will come into, onto this paper as this is a projection of this point onto this 2d paper the coordinate system which represents this projection is known as projected coordinate system however as this is a point on the 2d paper itself it is not a projection it is an original point this point can be represented by the simple geographical coordinate system so there are two differences in case of projected coordinate system this is a projection of a point located somewhere else onto a 2d paper 
and in case of durable coordinate system it is the original location of the point on a surface or on a cube on a 2d or 3d surface so here in case of geographical coordinate system there is uh, no discrepancy or any error term but in case of projected coordinate system there can be error because if you use if you use the this 2d paper then it will be infrared then you can take the impression of this point on that 2D paper, but it will have some errors. However, if I use instead of 2D paper, if I use a cone, if, if I fold the paper into cone and then take the impression of this point, then it will have some then it will have some other coordinates. Again, if you can, uh, you can take this, the impression of this point in a, in a, sh in a paper like this, then the impression will be something different. So based on the projected coordinate system used, the impression will also change. The impression of this point or projection of this point will also change. As I have described earlier, coordinate system can be divided into this geographical coordinate system and projected coordinate system. So there are various projected coordinate system, there are various geographical coordinate system, continental, country, solar, etc. Continental means Asia have its own geographical coordinate system, Europe, uh, America, they, they all have their own coordinate system. And then in case of projected coordinate, coordinate uh, system, this UTM means uni Universal Transverse Marketer. Universal Transverse Marketer. So this is a way of taking a projection of a point in some surface to another surface. So it practice the there are different types of projection. One is represented by UTM, one is represented by NED, and there are many more. And there is another one is their custom projection. This is self-made projections, a self-made coordinate system with a uh, new type of project, uh, projection paper. So this varies with GIS projects that you are working. Now these things are already described. What is SHP? What is SHX? What is DBF? And GeoDatabase is nothing but that uh, attribute table. Is that simple database? If there are more than one what attribute table that you can use for uh, and that you can connect in between, then it is they they are known as relational database management system RDB MS. If it is referenced geospatial, then it is a geo database. If there is no geospatial point, then it is a simple database. And there are global positioning system, GPS system. All of you know we have GPS in our mobile. There are the separate GPS reserver, uh, GPS receiver. Sorry. So in this case, what happened to uh, how a GPS system uh, identify a point on the earth surface with the help of coordinates? So if you are standing here with the GPS meter, then the GPS meter can give you an exact position in a geospatial manner. So in that case, you can use any type of coordinate system, but the GPS will help you to find the coordinate of your location. Now, how they find it, there are various methods for finding 
the GPS coordinates or the coordinates of a location of a feature on the art surface. So the model is uh, just a, in short, you can say, we can say that there are hundreds of satellites, geospatial, uh, geospatial satellites uh, floating in the atmosphere. There are hundreds of such satellites. And what happens is your GPS reservoir send signals to nearest of them. So some GPS receiver use 9 to 10 satellites, some uses more. But what it happens is it send a signal to the satellite and the satellite receives the signal into its control system and replies with a reply signal. Now the time taken for the signal to start from the receiver to satellite and then reverse satellite to receiver is noted. Similarly, all the, all the time taken for the signals to reach the nearest of satellites, say 9 to 10 or any, any number, all those times are noted and they are used, they are used to find the distance, to find the distance from the receiver to the satellite, from the receiver to the satellite. So this distance, if the satellite distance from the earth surface is known, then and this distance is known, then the distance from the satellite, perpendicular distance of the satellite to the uh, receiver will also be known because this is known, the distance of satellite to the receiver is known, the perpendicular distance of a satellite onto its earth surface is also known. So these two can be used to calculate the distance of the receiver from the perpendicular distance of the satellites. Now, which will give you, which can easily give you, so, which can easily give you the x and y point of the receiver. Now the same points can be found from all the satellites to which the signal emitted from the receiver has, has reached. And this deductions of these distances are averaged to find the resultant distance of the receiver to the satellites and the perpendicular distance of each satellite on the earth surface. So which is used to find the x, y and z of the receiver. So more expression I will do in the another presentation later on. Now these are some basic questions. So what is the difference between GIS, GIS and a map? Actually GIS is a diet is an information system, is a dynamic system. You can change the say information in a GIS system. You can edit it, you can update it, you can delete it, the information. So more or less it's a, the, you can say it as a dynamic and interactive 
map. Whereas map is nothing but a yes, geospatial representation of the features or geospatially representative information. Uh, a map can be used to represent many things, but they cannot be changed. They cannot be edited, they cannot be updated, they cannot be deleted. Which you can you can in a GIS system. Now you see there are lots of non-map uh, non non-map output of GIS. You can use GIS to make charts, graphs of the database of the data you have stored in the in your attribute table. So you can do those analysis which are not related to map, but you have to you are using the georeferenced information for your analysis through the data stored in the attribute table. Now what is GeoTIF? GeoTIF is a type of file which uh, which is actually a raster file. It's a grid, all grid files are raster files. Raster files stores their information in pixel. I have already discussed. In case of GeoTIF, GeoTIF is already uh, has the georeferenced information. That means latitude, longitude, elevation of the ge geographical feature. In, in in its image in its file so when a file is georeferenced already georeferenced it is known as geotif file now what is datum these are all very common datum is a reference frame and i have already discussed about projection projected coordinate system so if you use the north american datum it is represented by NAD. There are other datums also. So uh, this is just for definition. A datum is a mathematical model used to determine overall height of continental rain masses like North America, etc. So the elevation of North America is used as the reference frame, and any points above it is represented in a if it is North American points, then it is the elevation of the North America is used as the origin of the origin or origin of all the elevation or all the features available above the North American continent. Okay, this is the elevation of North America if you are using anything. If you are using something else, there will be some other basic or reference elevation, which is also taken as the zero point. So as you can see, the raster file, there are various type of raster file, right? This file is digital elevation model. This file stores elevation in the pixel right so there are various other file also tiff is a very well known file when you scan a document the scanned information is saved in a tagged image file format so uh, that is tiff so there are various other raster file also any file which stores the information in pixel in in a box of uniform dimension is known as raster file or grid file. So let us go into another. Uh, there are other type of files also, the like ARC digitized raster graphics. Now these are used by US military to store raster images of paper maps. Band interleaved line. So these are actually the bands, different uh, the information stored in different bands. Like a color image is uh, stored in three bands, red, yellow, blue. So if it is uh, taken by infrared cameras, then there will be another band of infrared color. So, uh, so each band stores
store the information in separate type of column. So red band store the information in red. That means the features which how the features are emitting the red color. If it is yellow band, uh, yes, blue band, then it stores the information regarding the way the blue color is emitted from the geographical features. And G, there is green band, same thing, how the geographical feature is emitting the green color, it is stored in the green band. So all these bands are clubbed and placed over each other to form the final colored image. Right? So in case of monochromatic image, that is black and white image, there are two colors, one is white, another one is black. That means the color which absorbs all other colors, that is black. And the white means a color which is created as all other color is already emitted out. So what happens is the information of the release of black color by the geographical feature that information is stored in the black band and another information about the color white is stored in another band. So these two bands are there in a monochromatic image. But actually there is only one band that is black because the way the colors are absorbed by the geographical feature is stored only in one band. Another band is only for reference where all the color is already emitted. So that is why those type of images are known as monochromatic image. Monochromatic image. And the color image is also known as polychromatic image. Okay, I have already discussed about digital elevation model. That is the raster file which stores the elevation of each point. Now this is not very important, PCX file, this is actually a common raster format produced by the scanners that you use in case of personal computers. Then there is a file known as HDTS, these are for information only. HDTS is a general purpose format designed to transfer geographical information. One HDTS variant is the raster profile, designed as a standard format for transferring raster data. So, however, this protocol has not yet been finalized. This is for definition only. Then there is stacked image. So, this is TIFF, actually. Common raster format produced by PC torrent programs and scanner. Just similar to PCX. In under PCX, you can place JPG, you can place PNG, you can place BMP. So, the, all these files types of file you can place under PCX. Now there are also various vector files that means DXF, AutoCAD files are actually saved in DXF. This is also a vector file. Drawing files and interchange files. Then there are digital line graphs up there and various other related formats. Now arc intro coverage is nothing that just the information when digitized any geographical feature when digitized by arc intro it is stored in a coverage so that is known as arc intro coverage. Now these are all very just for definition DXF is the AutoCAD file drawings are saved in DWG file in case of AutoCAD and digital line graphs yes this is Actually, the file format used by USGS, US Geological Survey, to store information. And this is HDTS. Um, this is also a data transfer file. Not very really important. Now, these are all different types of data formats. You can use vector product format, tiger format, 